I want you to imagine a game that captures the feelings you get when exploring, gathering items, and fighting bosses in Terraria, but also has the charming friendship, town building, and community aspects of Stardew Valley. My goal is to create such a game. Now that's a high bar to reach, but I'm determined to make it happen, and I hope you'll at least take a peek at what I have so far and what I'm planning. I've been developing for 8 months, and here's the idea for the overall plot and theme. The game is about a community of goblins whose island is being attacked by invading humans. The player will need to fight off the attackers, clean up their messes, and explore the depths below for resources. Our existing viewers have seen that I have many of the core systems done. You can walk around, attack enemies, hatch and grow livestock, farm, fish with your fishing spears, and chat with NPCs who don't have actual art yet. Online multiplayer with up to 8 friends is completely supported, and I've also implemented containers, armor, enemy spawning, inventories, crafting, and hanging out with NPCs. And today I have even more new stuff to show. First up are bosses. Much like Terraria, bosses will be a key part of the game's linear progression. They'll drop rare items that essentially act as keys to future stuff. Sometimes this is in the form of an actual key, sometimes it's a new pickaxe material, or even just an event that happens. Since our protagonists are technically monsters, I want the bosses in the game to be humans that resemble a typical D&D adventuring party, so I drew up this druid lady who the goblins will know only as the Huntress. She'll serve as a boss in the forest region and float around overhead shooting projectiles at the player. Then once she hits half health, she'll morph into this porcupine bear monster and either roll aggressively at the player or shoot a barrage of spikes. The visuals aren't perfect with the bear yet, but I'm just glad that the whole boss system is working. As more players join the fight, the boss's health will scale accordingly. Next up is the swarm system. Terraria fans know that in Terraria you occasionally get invaded by things like pirates and goblins. As a champion of goblin apologetics, it hurts to see my babies misrepresented in this way, but that's just how it goes. The goblins will spawn in senselessly from either side of the screen with no real consequences if you die, it's just kind of a fun free-for-all where you can commit genocide on an innocent race of sentient beings. I'm implementing something similar, but I think with a bit more direction. You can try to disable these sources of pollution, and in doing so, a finite number of enemies will swarm in from all sides and try to kill you. Once you kill them all and destroy the pollution source, the nearby enemies will be purified back to their original state, which will allow them to drop more interesting items. I then realized I've been staring at the same ugly goblin for the past 8 months and wanted to mix things up, so I added a character customization menu. I eventually want to add more than 2 body types, for now I have a vaguely male and vaguely female one, but you can change your nose, eyes, skin tone, hair, and hair color. This way you can stand out when you play multiplayer with your friends. All I had to do to make the art be colorable is just make it grey, export it, and then change the color in the actual object in the game engine that I use. Super easy. And speaking of art, some of you may have noticed that the art has changed. I've transitioned from single outlines like this to double outlines lines like this. I can only think of a handful of games that do the double pixel outline, but I like how it makes things look a bit more cartoony and clear. TikTok seem to like it, but I'm curious what the YouTube crowd will say, so feel free to leave a comment down below with your thoughts. I love getting feedback, and I read every single comment. Now next up I had a fusing mechanic. I envisioned goblins as tinkering creatures that kind of mix and match things experimentally to create hodgepodge contraptions, so I made it so you can fuse certain items and weapons together. But before I dive into that, I've got a word from our wonderful sponsor for today's video, Kenzie Academy from Southern New Hampshire University. I personally have an electrical engineering job, which is fine, but lately I've been wanting to shift over to something software related. But how do I do it? I could get another four year degree, but that would too long. I could study coding on my own, but it might be hard to land interviews with a resume that just says, I promise I can code. A solid third option is to get a certificate that shows you know how to code, and that's exactly what Kenzie Academy offers. Kenzie Academy is an online bootcamp style program that gives you instruction and training designed to prepare you for a career in tech in just 9-12 to 12 months, depending on the program. You can get certificates in cybersecurity, web development, UX design, or software engineering, which by the way was co-developed with Amazon Technical Academy. Kinsey Academy offers accredited, project-based learning in less than a year, giving you a solid foundation that employers will value. Their dedicated team of career readiness experts will support you through the job-seeking process, preparing you for interviews and ensuring success. With access to Handshake, a powerful job-seeking platform, you can connect with companies actively hiring, apply for jobs, and attend exclusive employer partner events. So if you're like me and you're looking to maybe change towards something more techie, then check out my link, kenzie.snhu.edu slash wattdesigns, and get what you need to start a new career in tech with a Kenzie Academy program. Alrighty, back to the fusing. It's not quite as flashy as the fusing in Tears of the Kingdom, I've just made it so you can walk up to these fusing stations for whatever weapon you're using and fuse certain items to your weapons. So if I fuse this fire sphere thing to the sword, it'll also deal some fire damage. More expensive items will lead to better results, so the player will have to carefully select which items they choose to fuse with which weapons. Once fusing was done, I added in a research mechanic. Here's the idea. There will be multiple floors that the player can go to, and I needed a way to stop the player from going down too deep too quickly. How do I lock the player from traveling downwards? I decided we'd have the goblins research the digging technology, and need a few items to do it. The first underground floor will likely be available from the start, but the second one will need items from some of the key bosses, to ensure that the player is strong enough. I implemented all this, so all we have to do is walk up to our research station, plop down the items, and the research will be completed, and we'll have access to the next floor. I can use this same system to unlock all sorts of other stuff, so I think it's a very necessary addition to the game. Next up I added what I'm calling gizmos. These will be very similar to something like charms and 
Monster Hunter. When you equip some armor, you'll have little armor slots. You can then put gizmos in them to equip them. So for example, if we put this lantern gizmo in our slot here, our little goblin will glow. It's almost sort of like Hollow Knight charms, but not quite so the player will have to choose between armor that offers a lot of defense or has lots of slots. The gizmos will generally be things that make your life easier or grant new abilities, like walking on hot surfaces or being able to swim. And then I've got another interesting change. Some of the tiles looked really harsh next to each other, especially these dirt ones, so I added the ability to have them blend together like this. I just did some shader magic to make the tiles blurry, nothing too complicated. I also made it so that when you select a tile, these little white boxes appear. Previously I just had the tiles highlight green, but I think this is a lot more clear. And then lastly I added these stations where you can walk up and put something in. Then once it's done, something will pop out. This could be used for furnaces, crafting stations, all sorts of stuff. They can also be configured to just constantly give off new items over time. You'll recognize all this from something like Stardew where you can put things into a furnace and they'll come out later, or the beehives that constantly give off honey. Pretty standard stuff. And this actually marks the end of what I'm calling Phase 1. We've got Phase 1, where I'll be making all the core systems required for the bare bones version of the game. Just a bunch of mechanics with hardly any content. Next is Phase 2, where I'll try to fill it with material and make a demo. So I'll be making a bunch of bosses, NPCs, biomes, stuff like that. By the end of it, I should have what's called a vertical slice of a complete game. It won't be done, but it'll just be a small slice that's completely fleshed out and feels like a real game. Then of course, phase three is just filling the game with content once I think it's fun. So if you want to stick around and see all the content get put in and maybe give it a shot once the demo is ready, there are three things you can do. You can subscribe to see future videos, wish us on Steam to get an email when it releases, or hop in the Discord channel to get announcements. I try not to spam there too much. And of course, while you're clicking things, a like or a comment goes a long way towards helping my little channel, so I appreciate anything and everything. And with that, I look forward to the next update, and I will see you all next time. Hello everyone, the time has come to shout out our eternally gracious patrons. I'd like to give a super special shout out to our Goblin Deity patrons for July of 2023, namely Zachary Nice, Zach Fox, Sarah, Charfil, Krakenfall, Brett Hudson, Matthew Spencer, aka Tarodev, Bertiti, Joseph Scobby, Megan Palmer, Random8409, Snout, and Slime Shisho. You're all amazing and I appreciate all of the support.